male hormones. We're talking about testosterone, right? Yeah, but there are also some other ones too, and today we'll take a quick dive into the male endocrine world. Now today's video is aimed at the average man, and if you're interested in hormones for sport or anabolic steroid use, then there are some other videos for that later in this series. So let's kick off and find out what goes on down here, and also up here. The journey begins in your brain, where the essential duo of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland take center stage. Now these two glands play a crucial role in regulating the release of male hormones, and in fact many other hormones as well. The hypothalamus produces a hormone called gonadotrophin releasing hormone, or GNRH, which signals the pituitary gland to release two important hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, or FSH, and luteinizing hormone, or LH. You might recognize those hormones as being female sex hormones, but they're actually really important for men too. They just have a totally different function. LH and FH travel through the bloodstream to the testes, where they then kickstart the production of testosterone, which is the primary male sex hormone. Testosterone is a steroid hormone and plays a vital role in the maintenance of the male reproductive tissue and secondary sexual characteristics that kick in during puberty. Things like getting a deeper voice and growing facial hair and body hair, increasing muscle mass and so on. But testosterone's influence extends beyond just physical change. It also plays a number of roles in other body systems, including metabolism, bone density, mood regulation, and so on. In the body's tissues, testosterone is converted into a more potent form called dihydrotestosterone, or DHT, which influences the development of the prostate gland, hair follicles, and certain parts of your brain. In high levels, it may also play a part in male pattern baldness, which is why some men take a drug called finasteride to preserve their hair. In the brain, testosterone can affect mood and behavior, although we don't fully understand the mechanisms at play. But certainly, high levels are associated with assertiveness, competitiveness, and even aggression. You may have heard of roid rage from the people that take anabolic steroids, which shoot your testosterone levels up far higher than they would be normally. In lower levels, it can contribute to a low mood and apathy. So as always with hormones, you can see that there's a bit of a feedback mechanism going on. In the average man, when testosterone levels start to go high, FSH and LH production decreases, and vice versa. Testosterone levels fluctuate during the day. It tends to be highest in the morning. It also fluctuates during your life. You have your highest levels during adolescence and uh, as a young man, and then it tends to decrease over time as we get older. When it comes to blood tests, people tend to check their levels if they think their testosterone level is low. Symptoms of a low testosterone include things like erectile dysfunction, low libido, low mood, lack of energy, decreased muscle gain in the gym, but all of those things can be caused by a bunch of other physical and psychological issues too. So checking your testosterone is only part of the picture. It tends to rule a low testosterone in or out. If it rules it out, then it's probably important to look at other aspects of your health as well, including your lifestyle, your sleep pattern, and your other organ systems. If it rules it in, then initially, take it with a pinch of salt, because one test isn't really enough. As I say, the levels fluctuate a lot, so a second early morning sample is normally recommended to confirm a low reading. If you have two low readings, then that builds the case for you trying to boost your testosterone. On the one hand, you might want to check those wider hormones, your FSH and LH, because that can give an insight into whether there's an obvious problem with testosterone production, either in the testes or because of issues in your brain, a condition which we call hypogonadism. Primary hypogonadism is basically testicular failure. Your brain is working okay, but your testes just aren't producing testosterone properly. This could be because of genetic conditions, testicular trauma, uh, autoimmunity, or certain drug treatments. Secondary hypogonadism means that there's some form of disruption in the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus. That can be due to the damage of the brain, or drugs, chronic illness, chronic stress, or emotional issues. Your doctor can work with you to work out what might be causing a low testosterone. However, by far the most common cause of a low testosterone is aging and lifestyle. This is still a form of hypogonadism, but it's not really disease related. And if your levels start to drop a little bit, then you can actually boost them through lifestyle changes. 
exercising regularly, but hey, not too regularly, not every day. That's a good mix of cardio, especially in the fresh air, and resistance training a couple of times a week. Sleeping properly, seven plus hours of uninterrupted sleep, eating well, cutting out smoking, cutting down on drinking, losing weight if you're overweight, and correcting vitamin D levels if they're low can help. Of course, your levels might drop despite all this, especially as we get older, and that's where testosterone replacement therapy, or TRT, comes in. TRT is prescribed by your doctor and can boost your testosterone back to healthy levels, helping you feel better. Now, you don't want your levels to go too high because that can lead to a number of health issues, which I'll cover in the anabolic steroid video because testosterone is like an anabolic steroid. And that's where frequent blood testing comes in to make sure you're healthy. Once you're on TRT, you'll probably see that your FSH and LH are suppressed on any blood test. That's because the testosterone you take in through injection or gel will be suppressing the output from your brain. Finally, a word on free testosterone. If you get a fancy blood test, you might have this one tested too. Free testosterone is unbound testosterone. Now, most testosterone is actually bound to proteins as it circulates around your body and it really doesn't do much. When it's liberated from the protein, it becomes free and it means it's biologically active and can interact with the androgen receptors on your body. It's therefore actually a more accurate reflection of biologically active testosterone and for things like your sexual health and muscle development. It's often in a calculated equation which marries up your total testosterone and your sex hormone binding globulin which is pretty reliable and you can measure it directly as well but that's quite expensive and it's often not very necessary. Anyway, that's testosterone in a nutshell, no pun intended. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope it helps, and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.